Alright, guys. Voice me to banana. Banana. I just like saying banana. Banana. He's lost it. He's lost it. How do we play this game? Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, my... My, uh, my thing got, uh, delayed. My Kingdom Hearts 3 got delayed. So here I am trying to go through, uh, the game. This one. I still have a bunch of, uh, stuff to do, so... It's fine. I'm not, I'm not that bothered, but... Um, I think that the channel, I'm gonna start focusing on, uh, doing Platinums. I think that's the thing I... You know, I like, I'm kind of a obsessive completionist in my regular life. So I think it'd be fun to kind of do that as well. Sorry, this is kind of loud. I'm going to turn it down. I don't want you to hear it from the back there. Um, yeah, so... Here we go. We're going to start platinuming some games, hopefully. And, uh, we're close on The Witcher. Actually, we can turn it up just a, a tiny bit. There we go. We're close on The Witcher, close on a few other things, so... Yeah. Um, this part's always a little confusing. I don't know if I could finish the game tonight. I have a few more hours. Um, it's not easy. I'm just trying to do another run through to get a no continue game. So if you see me going to push continue, stop me. Ah, but yeah. I mean, I love this game. It's always a, it's a little bit of a chore sometimes to to play it and uh, you know for everything to go well, but overall. It is something that brings me great joy. And I'm so psyched for it to get the three tomorrow, so. Um, yeah. But yeah, I want to come back to this. I want to finish my normal playthrough. Um, I want to beat the optional bosses. I want to beat Sephiroth. I have to go back through and play it on proud mode, too, in order to get all the trophies and stuff. I'll probably just stick to my original playthrough to get all the synth items and stuff like that, so... I mean, we're not super close, but we'll do some grinding, it'll be fine. I think I'll be less... less... decidedly less psyched to grind 2, because 2 was never... I don't know, I just didn't respond to 2 as well as um, 1. I, I, I didn't like it as much. I don't know why that is, you know. Carbit, what's up? Ah, uh, but yeah, so... I'm trying to remember, I think 2 and 1 are all kind of like shifting together in my mind, so I don't really remember specifically what uh, each one is. But uh, yeah, so anyway. Uh, Main Street... It is funny though, watching this and seeing some of the videos of the new one, seeing how just how small these levels are, you know? So, yeah, pause it. Do we go, I'm trying to remember, do we go down and then out to the desert? No? Okay, Def definitely a no. Um, yeah, that's uh, the problem with taking a break from these games, because it's, uh, like I've said before, the level progression in the Kingdom Hearts games is so bizarre, at least in the first one. There's Jasmine hiding behind <laughs> these boxes. Uh, Cutscenes have come a long way, even from what 2003. Sorry, I'm looking at my looking at my my screen. I can see my squinty eye. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's weird because the one that I think would be the non-squinty one ends up being the squinty one. So you never know, really. Don't you walk away, you won't hear me say. Uh, oh, I need to listen to that new Face My Fear song. Will it be better than Simple and Clean? Trick question. That's impossible. Alright. Uh, but yeah, I would love to... Yeah, I have to play this on proud mode, so it's good to get back and reacquainted with it before I get into 3. I'm probably just going to do what I said I'd do from the beginning and I kind of got burnt out on because I got annoyed at uh, Birth by Sleep and all that stuff. I'm going to do it. I'm going to force myself to get a platinum in everything, and I, I think I'm even going to do chain memories. I think it's going to happen. 
Okay, so see what, that's what I was saying about the level progression. So we got Jasmine, right? And then we have to, we can't go that way. We have to go back out and like trigger something else. It's not here, so we just talked to Jasmine. Do we need to go back to Aladdin's house? That's what I'm always confused by. So I want that Plaza Main Street. It's funny when they have in two, you're like, oh yeah, but they have bigger, uh, there are bigger levels in Kingdom Hearts 2, but at the same time, they're like just as desolate, so it's not really that much of an upgrade. So we freed Jasmine. Do we go to the desert now? Yes, we do. Okay. It's all just doing the weird order of stuff, so I'll save it out here real quick. Man, the Agrabah stuff in 2 is just, uh, it's bizarre. That flying level seems to go on forever, um, but, you know, whatever. I do love these games, no matter how much I complain about them. I just love, I, I honestly, I just became uh, obsessed with this dodge roll. That's, that's what ruined it for me. I love locking on and being able to switch with uh, just a flick of the R3. Or no, I mean, sorry, the shoulder buttons. And uh, in the second one, you can't do that for whatever weird reason. Use thunder. Why not? That worked out well. What's going on? How do you break these guys? Okay, whatever. Just bash them. Just hit them over and over. That's the way to do it. No strategy. Who dares disturb my slumber? I used to be incredibly incredibly afraid of uh, the tiger, the sand tiger. I mean, it does literally open the movie with like him eating someone, so. But, hey, that guy shouldn't have trusted Jafar in the first place. Um, I forget, isn't Aladdin like semi-useless? I can't remember, but let's switch out Donald because we know what Donald's gonna do, don't we? Look, I got a new uh, renewable, uh, not renewable, but it's like a rainbow plastic, or sorry, no. Uh, defeat the purpose. Uh, it's like a stainless steel, stainless steel straw. So that's kind of fun, right? I'm not sure if this nub is decorative or I'm supposed to put my mouth on it, but whatever. Just put my mouth on it. So who knows? Who knows? But yeah, you gotta get behind these guys. Ugh. But yeah, I'm so excited to play three. My package was delayed, unfortunately. I, I mean, honestly, it's my fault because I waited too long. If I was looking at it, I, was, I wasn't sure if I was going to make enough money at work to get KH3. And then I was looking at stuff, and I was like, oh, man, I should get it. I, I had some really good days last weekend. So I was like, I'll get it. But by the time I ordered it, it was like yesterday. I was like, well, let me check on the shipping for Amazon. They're like, you know what? You'll get $10 for credit, and you'll get um, you get the pre-order item, which is pretty sweet because you wouldn't get that. I couldn't just go to, like, GameStop and pre-order something. But, uh... Oh, hey, man. Sorry, I didn't see you in my chat. Hey, 99. Hey, Fresh to Kill. I think I partied too hard and oh. Oh, no, Fresh to Kill. I'm sorry. For whatever reason, my chat is not updating on my other screen. Let me refresh my screen, so hopefully I'll be able to talk to you guys. I apologize for seemingly ignoring you. Um, but, yeah, I, I wanted to get the incentives or whatever, so I pre-ordered, technically, Kingdom Hearts 3 yesterday selected one day shipping and they said don't you worry don't you worry Taylor your precious Kingdom Hearts will come by midday on January the 29th 2019 and I was like oh cool best of both worlds I managed to wait long enough so I knew I had enough money I was being responsible an adult waiting for a Kingdom Hearts 3 and um, <laughs> and yeah and then uh, today I got an update and it's like congratulations we're updating you on your Amazon package it's uh, going to arrive tomorrow. I was like, whoa. So, hey, 99. Yeah, $10 credit. I figure, like, I almost pulled the trigger on it earlier today. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is on sale for, like, $22, $24 on Amazon. I was like, I might as well just buy that because I wanted to get it anyway. But, you know, I always explain that stuff away, so. Anyway, I could see your comments on my screen. I don't know what was happening before. I apologize again. Yeah, I'm really digging this new setup, guys. I'm, I'm still happy that we changed it, so I don't have to be... I got this pretty prime uh, streaming setup now, so I can be at my computer and then also look at my screen. So we're good. Super professional now. 
All I need now is that green screen, and uh, we'll be on our way. So, feeling pretty psyched. All right, all right. I'm trying to remember what to do. It's been a while. Press X is what I've surmised so far. Like a minute, fresh to kill. I'm so sorry you're not feeling well. Did you is it beer before liquor? Is that what you did? I hope you recover. Drink some if you have some branch chain amino acids. That's the best way to get ahead of a uh, hangover. So take some ibuprofen, branch chain amino acids. If you want to prepare for next time, definitely get some of those. While you sleep, just take a bunch of it before, like two scoops. It'll keep your muscles and your body, your organs nice and hydrated. You'll wake up feeling like a thousand bucks. It truly is like a... I don't drink that much, but I, I did so in college briefly for like a one semester. And I had BCAs and ibuprofen I never wanted. Everclear and Fireball. Oh boy. Well... <laughs> the Everclear is, uh, that's where I feel like you run into trouble. Um, it's easy to, uh, maybe overindulge in that one. Man, uh, I remember in college, my friends always got Crystal Palace, which was disgusting. Sorry to all my Crystal Palace employees out there that are watching this. I'm not meaning to denigrate your good name or anything, but man, that stuff is gnarly. It's not not good. Yeah, I don't really drink anymore. It's not really my thing. I like just, uh, my vice is just self-doubt. I just indulge in that every day, and you know, it usually gets me to where I want to be. And moonshine? What kind of moonshine? Just like regular? I used to have a girlfriend from North Carolina, and I had Blackberry moonshine ones, and it was delicious. Actually, I, that was something I was like, oh yeah, I can move. Well, at least you can type. At least we can have a good conversation. Right? Isn't that what's most important? Oh no, I forgot those fall. See, this is what I was saying about the uh, the level advancement of this game. It's just like, there's no, and I've been reading more about game design, because I do love games. Uh, this year, or I guess last year, late last year, with like God of War and how impressive, uh, impressive, how impressive the game design was there. And um, I did think the game design and the way that game in particular guided the player was very well done because it wasn't an open world game like Red Dead. It was more of a controlled narrative. And seeing how they developed the the, um, the levels in order to guide the player and guide the player's eye and all that stuff is pretty cool. So if you can seek that stuff out on Twitter, it's really nice. I love talking too. That was always weird because, I don't know, I was, people are always like, oh, are you an introvert? And they said that during like uh, high school or whatever. Ah, oh, shoot, I don't have, I don't have Donald. Um, and I felt like an introvert, but I love talking. So it's like one of those things where, I don't know. I like selective talking. I like talking to you, but like I don't, I'm not a person that just strikes up conversations. I've had a few friends that I know or I've had a few friends that I know, I know? Present tense, I don't know if we're friends really anymore, but um, that would just like start talking to random people. I'm like, not about that. Uh, I don't know, it's weird. I don't like random people starting a conversation with me. Can I not skip this? So, I'm gonna jump down there. Is this where we fight the uh, caterpillar? Caterpillar? Maybe? Yes, indeed. Whoa! I, I honestly forget how to beat this part. Beat it in like a... How do we do this? Just gotta run it out of town, right? Got tech, tech! But yeah, so after we do this, or, or oh god, I can't speak. <laughs> easy, uh, easy, no continue run. We'll continue our uh, c normal run. That's my plan. Get really good at the game, farm a bunch, get soar up to level 100 or 99 or what what have you, and then um, you know defeat the clock guy, defeat Mark Zusik or whatever, and then. Um, also defeat, I believe you can fight Zemnis, right? Zemnis? Zigbar? Z Zoltan? Um, 
You can defeat the guy. He's uh, the one they added for the HD 1.5 remake. And we're gonna fight him, get everything, and then the last playthrough we'll play is Proud Mode after we're super well versed in the game. And that one is just gonna be probably like a speedish run. Not like an actual speed run because I'm not that good, but just to run through the game, you know, as quickly as possible. Like what we're doing now. We're probably not gonna go. I just need to defeat it with no continue, so we're probably not going to go to, um. Probably not gonna go to uh, Little Mermaid. Uh, what's it called? I forget what her world is called. It's not fun. <laughs> or it's less fun, I should say. Not to say it. Oh my god, she getting smacked in the face by fire. It's not my favorite, how about that? Desert, desert. Ooh. But yeah. So close, guys. My body's numb. I haven't felt like that in a long time, but I know that feeling. It's not a good feeling. Drink some water. Hydrate. If you can. Oh, here's the tiger. Diamond, diamond, diamond in the rough. Oh, I forgot this is like a mini. Oops, sorry. Forgot this is like a mini boss fight. Oh no! <laughs> I totally forgot about this. How do we get up there? I don't even know. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I was like, what? What is happening? Well, <laughs> got it. We got it almost. This, this is easy. Take that! I wonder if Haley Joel Osment had to re-record his. Take that! Take that! Now that he's like a 35-year-old man. Man, uh, guys, I've been feeling super creative. I'm really, really happy. I have some, I've had some really promising meetings lately, uh, writing-wise, and working on a new uh, pair of like, short films with some friends, and I'm really, really excited. It's, uh, all this stuff's going very well, so hopefully uh, your guy will be a professional writer very soon. But uh, I'll, I'll definitely keep you updated. I'll, I'll let you know, and you'll know especially as soon as I get that sweet, sweet green screen. Nice. Yeah, thanks, 99. How are you, by the way? Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, tomorrow we'll have Kingdom Hearts 3, which is exciting, but for right now, you know. I watched this, like, 35-minute uh, video on the lore of Kingdom Hearts, and it was hilarious. Uh, so fun. And so just, like, so insane. The lads carried me, and I fell down my stairs. Oh, no. Well, I hope you didn't hurt yourself. I've never fallen downstairs, actually. I have run upstairs in flip-flops in college just like during the day and I like uh, slipped and the front of my like right toe got like sheared off it was not fun and it was like a big flap too it was ooh, ooh. it was a uh, not a good feeling this is such a weird level design Oh, I think I got some more AP that I can use. If we can get to Ansem right tonight, tonight, that'd be great. I love that Ansem fight. It's um, It was really hard with only the Kingdom Blade, but I, I do like that fight quite a bit. It's a fun multi-stage uh, multi fight. Um, that's probably one of the fairest fights of the game. Now, I do say the Ansem fight, I don't like the... Um, I really, really don't like the, what's it called fight, the, uh, like the flying Ansem boat fight afterward. So like the first part of the Ansem fight, because it's basically like one 40 minute fight, but man, that first part is so fun, and that second part is so bad. I know, and you're good, sweet. Oh, guys, we saw, um, my girlfriend and I saw this movie called Free Solo, which was nominated for best, uh, best documentary. If you have a chance to see it, definitely watch it. We saw it yesterday. I don't know if you guys are into bouldering or any of that stuff, but it's about a climber named Alex Honnold, who's like an incredible athlete, and he uh, free soloed, uh, which is, you know, climbing without any rope, uh, El Capitan, which is this insane 
like the biggest, most glorious rock face in all of the world, basically. It's in Yellowstone National Park. And it's like uh, 4,000 feet or something of just sheer, not sheer rock, but like a bunch of different bluffs and stuff. It's crazy. And um, he climbed it over the course of four hours without a rope and lived and like did it. He did it, which is it's just insane, you know? And like, uh, it's a, a really great documentary. Uh, I felt so anxious because literally like all these people are filming their friend knowing that at any moment he might just like plunge to his death. But man, it just shows you that the human spirit is pretty incredible you know because he just is so concentrated and so focused to be able to do something that takes you know basically in the in the film someone describes it as imagine a gold medal olympic level athlete having to compete in an event in which if they do not get the gold medal they die and that's basically what it is like once you're think about it, if you're climbing something that's like 4,000 feet like after the first 10 minutes not even 10 minutes, after the first 20 feet, if you fall, you're going to be seriously messed up. And um, he did it. It's, it's just insane. So, yeah, I mean, see Free Solo, it's incredible. I want to see Cold War now, uh, next, and if Beale Street can talk. A lot of great films out this year. I would say, I like that guy, Tight Roping Across the Grand Canyon. Did he do that as well? This is the Dalmatians. Shoot. Come on, just let me open this. That's like, oh yeah, that is like that guy. Oh yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah, no, definitely. Guys, ah, heartless. But yeah, it's it's crazy. But imagine like imagine that tight roping across the Grand Canyon, but that guy had to do it for like four hours going up a up a cliff. It's great. I never, you know, I I'm always fascinated by climbers as well, and like so many times in this, I'm like, what is he what is he holding on to? He's holding on to, like, absolutely nothing. It's crazy. It's like the tiniest, tiniest gradation in the rock face. It's it's insane. Alright, also, I'm just totally winging it right now. I totally forget like where we're going and what we're doing. I think we're going to fight Jafar in the throne room. Which is all lava, I believe, and we have to fight. We have to hit Iago. Is that the first game or the second game? I cannot remember for the life of me. But um, yeah, the also, by the way, the new game looks incredible. Like the graphics are really, really nice. I was a little bit worried seeing some of the lead up stuff, but like man, some of those screen grabs that I've seen recently are just beautiful, and definitely like that weird same sort of Kingdom Hearts style. Uh, that I've come to know and love. Oh yeah, by the way, let's look at slightly raises defense and max HP. Oh hey, we have another one, wait. Ray of light, max HP and MP, slight max HP, oh we have white fang, XP necklace, cool. Jungle King, um, abilities is what I wanted to do. Did I ever see mid 90s? I saw, uh, yeah, I did see mid-90s. Mid I liked mid-90s quite a bit. I um, thought it was a really, really well done first film. Like, pretty pretty impressive for that, uh, to have been his first film. Very uh, slice of life, but in like a meaningful way. There was a subtle arc to everyone. Um, I liked that kid, Ray. Right? Ray, I think, was the cool kid. The cool older kid who was a... Oh, you live in Colorado! Awesome, I used to live in Colorado. I spent a majority of my uh, teen years in Colorado with my mom. We lived over near the, the Roaring Fork Valley, or in the Roaring Fork Valley near Aspen. I don't know uh, if that's close to you or not, but it's beautiful. If you guys never been to the Roaring Fork Valley, sorry, I just like screamed into the mic. If you guys never been to the Roaring Fork Valley, definitely check it out. I get excited thinking about Colorado. Bummed. I haven't been back. I haven't been back in over like a year, so it's uh, you know, sad. Last time I was back was before uh, my grandma passed away, so that was nice. We got to spend some time with her, and it was at a uh, it was at a wedding, of my my cousin's wedding, so that was also very nice. Um, but yeah, since then I haven't gone back. So Got those Dalmatians. Uh, I'm trying to remember. 
need? I don't really need any of that stuff. I won't budge. Explore the... Like, keep exploring the ruins. Ugh. <sighs> um... Sorry. I think I need to jump. I live in Denver and used to live in Grand Junction. Oh, sweet! Oh, yeah! So I, I totally know where we are. Awesome. How's the snow, by the way? I know, um... It's been a pretty good winter. I think I just jumped down here. Uh, did I just jump to my death? No. Okay, I was like... I was very cavalier about just flinging myself off of a, a cliff. I really need to switch to Goofy, though. Or not Goofy, Donald, so I can do these trios. Honestly, I don't even know why I'm not fully Goofy and Donald the whole time, because the trios are, like, the thing you actually need to do. Um, but yeah. Awesome. I love Colorado. Deep and abiding love for it. Uh, I, you know, I tried to be, like, a, a snowboarder kid and stuff, but... I, just, I was just too afraid of... I had some friends that started getting, like, seriously injured. And I was just, like, not about it. <laughs> I'm too tall. I have to fall a long way. You know? Uh, fall a long, long way if I fall. So, Oh, I know exactly what we're doing now. We have to fight... We have to fight Jafar while... Let's see, Genie gives us problems around the... The, uh... Chamber. Oh, shoot. Okay, let's switch... Yeah, let's get rid of Al, because Al is useless. Uh, get out of here, Al. My guys, my boys. I oh, mean, that's one thing I'm not looking forward to, to get this, uh, this platinum, is I gotta to get all the dumb, gummy stuff. <laughs> the most baffling part of this game. Winter is cold and snowy. That's good, though, as winter should be, I think. I would hope. Um, it's crazy though. If you're guy, if anybody's out on the East Coast, stay safe because man, that uh, that winter advisory that I saw was chilling. No, it's not funny. It's like crazy. It's gonna be like colder than the Arctic, <laughs> right? This weekend. So seriously, be safe. Uh, try to stay inside. It's gonna be like negative sixty in some places with wind chill. Like, what is that? It's climate change. That's what it is. But still, like. My God, you know, like what? negative sixty. Like what? What a disgusting number. I really don't want to fight these guys. I'm just gonna skip them. Go away. See, there, there's a power to saying no, guys. Just leave. Yeah, in Michigan. That's crazy. That's insane. Like why? Why? What have we wrought? How, what is Sora's shoe size, you think? Like, it must be pretty. I mean, that's like, that's a fair bit, right? Hall. Oh, that's for, uh, to get ourselves up with uh, Aladdin. His shoe size must be at least like a 12 or 13. He's a, what, a 12 year old boy in this one? Um, I need to get Spyro too. That was one of those things I wanted to do with, uh, ow. Um, I'm trying to remember what, the, what my strategy is for this one. Let's just hit him until he dies. How about that? Um, I want to play Spyro because I was an N64 kid, right? And so I never really got the chance to play Spyro. Um, I only saw it a few friends, and I thought I would much rather, you know, go home and play Super Mario 64 or whatever. So I'd love to play Spyro. Um, I would also love to play the Crash Bandicoot HD Remix because, like, I like a annoyingly hard game, even though it doesn't seem like it. Because I feel like at least at least those games seem fair. They never seem cheap. Jafar, come on, man. Uh, this is pretty easy though. I remember on uh, regular mode, he flew away, didn't he? Um, regular mode, this was pretty not not overly difficult, but still like I think fairly challenging. Whereas this is straightforward. I think we'll be fine. Just gotta stay away from Genie. I still can't believe that my package was delayed. At least I got those ten dollars. I don't know, I would love to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey on the stream. Um, 
I don't know, I think you guys would be interested in that, right? You guys like open world stuff. I still need to Platinum Red Dead, I'm fairly close to 100%. I just have to do hunting challenges, which are, uh, not the pits, but like, fairly involved. You know, it's gonna take some time. Come on, just let me kill you. And it's always so strange hearing Genie, and it's not Robin Williams, but like this strange approximation of him. Which is not, it's not bad, but it's like, it's definitely not him. I saw him beating Red Dead. Red Dead, the ending made me cry. It's so good. It's peak storytelling in games, I think. Between that and, um, between Red Dead and Spider-Man and God of War, it's been such a crazy year for games. Like, uh, I think it's really, really cool. Okay, so is this, is this? Okay, it is this fight. I did not remember if it was or not. Thought it might have been the second game, but it's not. Cool. Let's do it. Where is the bird? Oh, shoot. My god. Did I just jump into the... Okay, I thought I just jumped into the fire. I'm really just flying by the seat of my pants tonight, guys. Oh, it's not... It's not Iago. It's the... The lamp. Oh! Ouch. Okay. Yago, do you mind? Can you, like, move, man? Don't want to fly off this. I also would like to play... I mean, I just want to play everything, guys. That Resident Evil 2 remake looks so good. And I love... Resident Evil 4 is one of my favorite games of all time. So... I must have played Resident Evil 4, like, I think I beat it like seven or eight times. Got to a point when I just, you know, during high school and I just didn't have anything to do. And I'd get home and just, like, beat it in one sitting, you know? Because it is one of those games where I think Resident Evil has always done a good job of making... Oh, God. Let's kind of skip this. Um, Resident Evil has always done a good job of making games that are of a, a length that is satisfying. Yet yeah, also appeals to speedrunners because it is they are shorter games, you know, but at the same time it feels like a full experience. So I would like to play that definitely. And play them it. I totally forgot that the number one had a remake as well. I need to get that one too. I never played one, I played four and then I played a little bit of five. I don't know why I fell off so hard. And they could easily just cut this. This should have been on the cutting room floor. Like, what is this? What is what is the point of that? <laughs> a little flourish. Okay, there's Agrabah done and dusted, right? And now I believe Jasmine went to Hollow Bastion. Man, I know they started the development a long time ago. But as a Samoan person, it would have been really cool to get Moana in there for uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. I know it was a long shot, but still, come on. The wind in my gun, and the thing, it calls me. And I know. Also, guys, if you haven't seen Moana, come on. It's so good. It's so good. I listened to. Moana after I leave this. I'm so gone. <laughs> Fresh to kill. I'm, I'm worried about you, man. Take it easy. I watched the Aladdin movie so many times. Aladdin was one of my favorites, I would say. I'm trying to think which one I watched the most. Beauty and the Beast, without question, was my, my go-to, I would say. But, um, besides that, I'm trying to think. I watched Toy Story a ton. Up. I watched Toy Story like so much and um, I also watched I watched all the weird movies which might explain a few things I watched The Great Mouse Detective I watched uh, The Black Cauldron Rescuers, Rescuers Down Under there is a new Toy Story coming out which I'm so split on I don't really know how to feel um 
I feel like, I don't know, for me personally, I don't think it's, I think three was such a natural ending, you know? And uh, I don't want to be a negative Nancy, but I just don't know, I just don't know how they're gonna, you know, how they're gonna expand upon that. I, I think it's really difficult. Um, let's do raise a defense, why not? Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, the end of three is such a beautiful ending because, you know, you have Andy, it seems forced. Yeah, I guess, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, it does. I mean, I love that stuff, but I do think it does seem a little bit forced. I guess we can turn on Treasure Magnet. I don't really like Sonic Blades, I'm gonna keep it off, but. Um, yeah, I just don't know. It's, um, it's one of those things where, and they also released a, they also released a, uh, a trailer where there was like a, a spoon that had like one of those pipe cleaners wrapped around it and it had a, like a face drawn on its spoon face or whatever and uh, the thing is like I'm not supposed to be here oh my god and you're like wait what does that mean does that mean that if you make something if you fashion something into this shape of a being you know, does that mean that this inanimate object is alive just because? You know what I mean? Like, it's some horrifying implications if literally everything is alive. That's what disturbed me because this guy's like, I'm not supposed to be here. And so basically if I like, I don't know, fashioned like a, a potato into the shape of a man, would that potato be alive? Like, I just don't know. It's it's really disturbing, right? Like I like what is that? Or like what happens if uh, someone dies, unfortunately, and like they put their like their favorite toys in the casket with them, or in the casket to be cremated with them? Like what what happens then? You know, like all this stuff. Dude, this is what I think about when I'm just laying in my bed at night. It's uh it's scary. I don't know. So, you know, I love Woody and Buzz, and that first, the first two I watched a ton. Like, it freaks me out even to think that Toy Story 2 came out in 99, I believe. Because I always thought it was like 2003 or something, but it was 99. It's really a long time ago now. But, uh, that, I think that When Somebody Loves You part with Jesse is probably one of the best sequences in any uh, animated film, or any film, just, you know, in general. It's really well done for like a music video interstitial part, um, but you know, the third one was great. I think they should have all died in the furnace, but obviously that can't happen, but still, uh, you know, it's a good, it's a great series. I'm sure it'll be pretty good. Nothing probably to worry about, but still, you know, Toy Story 4. Would I had rather seen, you know, a new property or like a new original film? Yes. Um, but at least with, you know, I don't know. It's hard though, because like, what do audiences want to see? You know, my eyes are open, but not open. I know that feeling. What do audiences want to see? Like that, the movie, uh, the kid who would be king, came out this weekend. Had a lot of great reviews. Starring Andy Serkis's son. Uh, directed by this guy named Joe Cornish, who, if you don't know, is one of Edgar Wright's friends. He did um, Attack the Block, which is an amazing like, low-budget sci-fi film. And it didn't do very well, you know? It's like, what do people want, really, you know? Oh, shoot, Monstro. Oops, I did not know this was the one I was going to. It might seem silly, but... uh being consumed by a sea monster is one of my fears. But yeah, so, you know, the kid who would be king made like seven million dollars in its opening weekend, which is crazy. You know, like barely anyone saw it. It's such a bummer. Because, um, you know, it's an original idea. And, uh, I don't know, it's just hard to predict, like, what, what people want. People complain a lot about, you know, movies not being as creative, but then, you know, someone tries to do an original movie and nobody sees it, so... 
you know, I always say vote with your dollars if you're really into something, but uh, there's only so much you could do as an individual. You can't really predict the market, so. But I love, I love movies. I love big movies. I love small movies. Uh, I've seen every movie except for Bohemian Rhapsody this year for Best Picture, so. If I had to choose a movie for Best Picture out of the nominees, uh, well, I would have nominated You Were Never Really Here with Joaquin Phoenix. If you guys haven't seen You Were Never Really Here with Joaquin Phoenix, definitely check it out. It's so good. It's so good. I haven't seen it yet, but I thought it would have been a better fit on Netflix. It did seem like a Netflix movie, and at least like with uh, Netflix and stuff, there's a lot of uh, you know films that would otherwise not get distribution that are able to you know, get out there and have an audience. Or you have like lower mid mid to uh, low to mid budget films that like Bird Box, which wouldn't really be made otherwise probably. The horror movies are easier to get find, uh, funded, but but like you know that like mid range like District Nine money like forty nine million that's that's kind of a hard thing to do now so yeah at least Netflix is good for that. But I, I'm on, I have one episode left of Daredevil guys I don't know if you guys watched Daredevil but like what the heck I'm still so sad that that was canceled. The third season is amazing and um, this is you know I'm a fan of the first two seasons but man that third season really really brings it it's so good. I know that uh, they're trying to restructure and you know they bought Fox so they want to change up their stuff but still I mean like that's such a bummer if they're gonna like Charlie Cox is an amazing daredevil I'll be so bummed if they don't bring him back which they probably won't so I'm already I'm future bummed what am I doing I love District 9 I do too um, District 9 is a great movie I was thinking about it's the cat food the cat food yes my name is Vikas Vandamova. Also a great example of uh, like a very fairly drastic character arc in a short amount of time for uh, Vikas Vandamova. Because he is kind of just like a reprehensible jerk in the beginning. And like as he comes to understand the struggle of uh, Christopher Johnson, right? <laughs> he uh, learns not to be that because, you know, even if he's an alien or whatever, not very much separates us in, re in reality. So yeah, District 9 is great. Um, you know, I like a lot of Neil Blomkamp's, I like his, his mind, I like his, his visual influences. Uh, I do feel like District 9 still remains his best film, which is, you know, I'm sure for any creator that's a, a little bit of a bummer sometimes because you want to keep improving and stuff. and. You know, like a lot of bands, sometimes the first, the first one is the most popular, the first album, and it's hard to surpass that. And I feel like he's kind of in that camp, you know, because uh, Elysium was a bit on the nose, I think, for me. Like, uh, I mean, it wasn't like the the symbolism in District Nine was like super subtle or anything, but still, like, Elysium was the most. <laughs> the most overt film in terms of like message which I thought was a good message too I mean I'm at a care for all but still like <laughs> it was like a literal very literal which is fine but you know like a little bit more subtlety sometimes yeah you like Chappie more than District 9 or more than Elysium I am Chappie Um, I like Charlton Copley. I think that's my that's my stance on a lot of this stuff. This is also the most confusing area in the entire game. When it says D area three, area four, chamber two, what what is this? What is this? What is this level design? Like why? Why are you doing this to me? Uh, I would definitely check out Elysium. Elysium is interesting and it has some pretty badass like mech suit katana stuff. You know, like all the stuff that, all the imagery that Neil Blomkamp always has is always really cool. You know, um, but I don't feel like the the movie's not as successful as District Nine or Chappie. I don't think. But also, one of the examples of like a movie that had a great trailer. Like I was so psyched for that film when it came out. I think it was 2011, right? Wow. Wow, guys. I feel old. 
My birthday's in April. Can we get to 200 followers by April? I hope so. I really feel like we could. Once we get that green screen, I tell you, it's gonna be it's gonna be a game changer. Um, so I feel like people just see a green screen and they're like, "Ooh, this person means business. It's business time." I'm excited to see the Lego movie, Lego 2, or the what, the Lego movie, the second one, or whatever it's called. God, this is the most, a, a map would be so helpful right now. No, not the mouth. <laughs> it's a weird thing to say. No, not the mouth. Okay, so chamber three. So how do we go from mouth to chamber one to chamber three? Okay, so that goes on the ground floor. So that's a dead end. So chamber one, got to jump up to two. Skip three. Uh, it's weird that when you just sort of fall, for whatever reason. Okay, can't go up here. Can I move this? Nope. Nope. Oh. Weird. Okay, so you can only go to chamber three. Wait, what? And then you can go to two? Or jump across? Maybe? No. Um, I played with Legos till I was in 10th grade. I mean, I would still play with Legos now if they weren't so freakishly expensive. Like, they're insanely expensive. And that's not even for, like, the... That's only... That's even for the kids' ones. Like, the intense ones. Like, that Millennium Falcon one I want so badly. Um, but it is, like, $900 for the main, like, uh, replica master class model or whatever it's called. Actually, I don't want... I love, I love the Millennium Falcon, but I would love to get, uh... They have a Slave 1, Boba Fett ship, which I think would be pretty freaking sweet. Chamber 6. You can see why this is just, like, this is nonsense. Like, what am I... Where am I? What am I doing? Chamber six is just a room. What is this? Oh, I'm out of MP. I actually managed to run out. But yeah, um, Neil Blomkamp, yeah. I'm excited to see what he does. He's doing the reboot of uh, RoboCop, so. I mean, that's right up his alley, dystopian, you know, highbrow. High concept stuff. You know, I'm into it. I mean, I just want him to be. Just want him to do well. Because I think he has a unique voice, and I want to see that uh, flourish. Robocop is a cool IP. I agree. I think it's also like a very under uh, or misunderstood IP. Like Paul Verhoeven was said, you know, kind of like similar to Judge Dredd in 2080, saying. That RoboCop was supposed to be like a commentary on like fascism and police brutality, <laughs> and every, all the American audiences that saw it were like, "This is so cool!" He shoots people with a super long gun, and he's just like, "Ugh, whatever." But also, kind of like, you know, not terribly surprising given most American audiences' uh, uh, interests, I guess. Ah, shoot, I missed it. Oh wait, I almost got it. Did not look like I could carry on or catch on to that all that for a mega elixir but yeah i think robocop is a cool ip um i never saw the joel kinnaman one i think it kind of just was a non-event right okay where am i going shoot god this is so confusing okay i gotta go up to two to three to two to six to stomach Drop, go through here. Oh, I forget I can roll and just skip a bunch of stuff. You know what we need is a Warhammer movie. That's my dream, is to do a Warhammer movie. Two, okay, we're here. Don't jump, go back to five, nice. And then, are we in the right place? Th these also are thematically just so bizarre because these, like what are these? They're not even, themed after like a body, like antibodies or something. But that was like a cool opportunity and they sort of just uh, made it into like a jack-o'-lantern guy. But Warhammer is the one, if I was a filmmaker that could start like a new 
like universe to play in, either with movies or TV, I would definitely do Warhammer. The Warcraft movie, I think, is one of my favorite Duncan Jones films. Uh, I think it's really good. I you know a lot of people didn't like it. I was like, I, I can't go there with you because I really like it. It ends on a super downer, just like the movie or just like the game did. Nobody's happy. You know, uh, it sets up, man, sets up Thrall and all this stuff, and it's like. I feel like if Pacific Rim was able to get a sequel, we should be able to get a sequel to Warcraft because, man, it really deserves it. And, um, Chamber 5. I, you should definitely check it out because I think it's a great film. Toby Kebbell, such an underrated actor. That guy is incredible. He's so good. And, like, nobody knows who he is because he does a bunch of, uh, motion capture. Yeah, I forget what the name of his, his um... His episode of Black Mirror is. It's the one where you can record everything that you see. It's him and Jodie Whittaker, the new uh, Doctor Who, actually. Um, but man, that that guy is so talented. And he's great as uh, Durotan, the chief of the orcs. Durotan. That's a great, that's probably my favorite Black Mirror next to uh, Haley Atwell's Be Right Back, which I thought was very affecting. Her and Donald Gleason when her her fiance dies. I think that's probably my favorite. Episode. It's just so human. Like it's a very simple sci-fi premise. It's very um, you know very distinct. But also just so well acted and such a showcase for Haley Atwell, whom I adore because she's amazing. Uh, and uh, yeah. Oh, 99, I was going to ask you, did you see the Birds of Prey teaser? I thought of you when I saw that. Because, uh, you know, Harley Quinn's back, and I'm psyched about that. And they got Huntress, and uh, Cassandra Kane and uh, who else? Dino Laurel Lance, Black Canary, Black Mask, Victor Zazz. Oh, man. Almost every episode couldn't make a good full series. Oh, definitely check it out, uh, 99. Just uh, Google... Um, what do you say? Birds of Prey trailer? Birds of Prey teaser? But yeah, it's Harley Quinn's back. Shows a little bit of Huntress, Cassandra Kane. Um, who else? Uh, Victor Zaz, Black Mask, who's Ewan McGregor, which is pretty sweet, right? Oh, I forgot to do the Trinity. There's a Trinity on the floor there. Oops. Whoops. Um, and uh, who else is going to show up? I don't know. Maybe Batwoman will show up in that one. It's Birds of Prey, so, you know, can't... I wouldn't count Barbara Gordon out, really, would you? Did you see that Dwayne Johnson said uh, he tried to get Jason Momoa to be in the new uh, Hobbs and Shaw Fast and Furious spinoff, but he just his schedule was too packed? And I was like, oh, man. It's happening. All the uh, Polynesians are coming together. Now they're just waiting for me. So psyched. It's gonna be great. Also, from a bit, you know, Dwayne Johnson's a businessman. It's pretty. It's pretty easy to see why. Man, this freaking map. I hate this level so much. Uh, why they'd want Jason Momoa? Like, he's a businessman. He he knows what makes money. Aquaman just made a billion dollars. You know. Crazy that Aquaman beat out the Dark Knight for the first time in, uh, what, 20 years, or 89, 30 years, almost. No, it'll be 30 years this year, 30 years, and uh, the number one DC movie is not Batman related. Crazy, and awesome, like, so cool. Good job, James Wan. I just watched the short for uh, Saw the other day, the original short that he sold to, Lion, uh, to Lionsgate. It's crazy seeing, you can even see then his, uh, his visual flair, he's such a talented director. Dude, come on, man. God, I hate this map so much. Oh. This is something that, like, I never made it here as a young kid, but, like, you know, little boy Taylor just went, like, what the hell is going on? Holy crap, don't fall. The auto lock is just punishing. Like, I wish it wasn't so twitchy. But yeah, 
Yeah, I still need to see Cold War movie-wise, and I still need to see if Beale Street can talk. Cold War got nominated, but not for Best Picture as Best Foreign Film for, I believe, Poland? It's supposed to be incredible. So, I have to see it. Also, it's always impressive to see something that managed to do something. Did I do it? Did I make it? Uh, it's 88 minutes, so it's, you know, it's a very quick, very punchy movie. Get in, get out, get paid, you know, that sort of thing. My god. Help! <laughs> How did I get through here? I'm gonna have to look this up, guys, because this is, like, this is too much for you, I'm sure. I to light a fire in his mouth? Isn't that how Pinocchio got out of the situation? I always remember the animation because it was so specific of Monstro being like, uh, uh, and like trying not to sneeze. He had smoke in his mouth. I wish he went to the Donkey Island in this one. That would be so scary. It's horrified me as a kid. I will say that's my one regret of the new one. Even though it looks great and everything looks amazing, I do think it's a bummer that there's such a premium placed on, uh, you know, Disney animation stuff and Pixar stuff and not necessarily on classic Disney. Holy crap, guys. Please just stop. <laughs> um, you know, I would have loved to see some of the weirder stuff. I knew they wouldn't do that because they want to do the, you know, the big ones. Lion King, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, whatever, but... It still makes me sad because, you know, it would be great to get some classic Disney love in there. <clears throat> okay, wait. I just need to. Let me look up real quick, guys. Monstro, Kingdom Hearts, 1.5. Chamber 1, Chamber 3, Chamber 6, Chamber 5, a thin walkway with a drop off on both sides. To make this worse, enemies will appear are all aerial, so it's easy to fall. Just run across to Chamber 4 to trigger a cutscene. The heck? The heckin'? So go back to 5. Wait, what? We're in Chamber 6. Shoot. We're in Chamber 5? Okay, Chamber 5. Run across thin walkway to get a cutscene. Oh. No? Okay, wait, here we go. Why do you I think it's pretty funny how uh, quickly Riku is just like betrayed. He feels like your friendship and trust has been betrayed. Just because you're hanging out with other friends and Traverse Town or whatever. Okay, so. Probably should Hit, head into the bowels after heading the save point. Bowels, 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 bowels. Bow, bow, bow.
Oh, there we go. Back to it. Sorry. <laughs> it sounded a little weird. We're back. We're back. Thanks, 99. That's helpful. I coughed, but then I pushed the button to mute. And, uh, oh, no. Why do I want to? I don't want to do that. Oh, gummy ship. I was wondering why I wouldn't say anything. Yeah. Um, no, I was saying I saw Split the other day, and I, uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, or not Split, Glass. Uh, I think it's, I think it goes in order of quality, or at least how much I like the films from Unbreakable to Split to Glass, but still, like, they're consistently entertaining. They're fun twists on the superhero genre. I always respect M. Night Shyamalan's, like, business acumen, because he, um... He self-funded. He self-funded Glass. So like, I don't even know how that payout works then because he self-funded Glass and Universal, or is it Fox? I think it's Universal. Only paid for distribution. It was number one, you know, for two weeks in a row, so. And it only cost like $9 million to make? That's insane. You know, because that movie looks great for, you know, only $9 million. He's an artful director. He has, you know, a very distinct very distinct artistic voice, and uh, it visually looks great. The colors and acting are, you know, they're all great. Music's good. Um, I did really enjoy it, and I, I love, you know, Mr. Glass. I love when he says first name, Mr. Last name, Glass. I still think Unbreakable is a masterpiece. So good. Um, Split was a lot of fun, too. James McAvoy, you know, he carries that movie. Actually, it's a two-hander. He and I think Anya Taylor-Joy is one of the most... Uh, one of the most talented actors of our generation. I guess we're the same. I'm only like four years older than her, I think. What is a generation? Who knows? But Split's great. Um, and I like Glass a lot, so. You know, it was a lot of fun. 
Just let me get there, please. Please. No. Apparently gummies come back in the third one, but they're not as bad. So we can hope, I guess, but you know. Whatever, whatever. Today's Friday. Friday the first. Oh, there's 31 days in January. Would you look at that? Man, we had some rough days last weekend working at my job. I can't stand brunch. Brunch is like the worst shift to work as a server. People are just brunch. People are just ugh. <gasps> disgust. Do not like them at all. The monstro again? The heck? I have to go the other way? Or do you say monstro's not here this time? I don't know. I want to know how they came up with this gummy portion again. It's just so weird. Like if this game came out now with this gummy portion, I think people should be like, what? I guess you could explain it away because it's just like part of Kingdom Hearts just usual bizarreness, but still it's it is just so strange. He attack, he protect. I was saying also guys, Daredevil, I'm almost done season three. Man, that show's good. I'm so sad that Marvel is or not Marvel, but oh shoot, I don't wanna be here. Skip! Skip! Don't land! No! No! Select world. We're leaving. No Atlantica. Uh-uh. This is a, We just didn't want to get that trophy. <laughs> no Atlantica. Yeah, Daredevil Season 3. Love the first two se series. Um, season 1, great. Great, great. First season. Season 2, awesome Punisher intro. Uh, John Bernthal's great Punisher. I, I'm going to watch that next, I think. Though I might watch a season of anime between, just to cleanse my palate of live action. Um, I've really been enjoying Hunter x Hunter, or Hunter x Hunter. Apparently the X is silent, news to me. Um, I don't know why you'd put it there. Are X's ever silent in uh, English? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I like Gone. I, I just like Shonen stuff, guys. I remember I was talking to someone on here, and they were talking about how, like... Hunter Hunter and DBZ and all those aren't very good. And then I was like, yeah, just give me someone that's like cool and relatable in a show. I'm playing Kingdom Hearts, so a show about friendship and like, you know, like fighting stuff together. And you, you got me. Like, I'm sold. You don't really need very much more than that. So I'm easy to please, okay? I, li I love these big, long uh, breaks in combat because it just makes me think it's over. And then it just keeps going. It gets worse. If they sped this up like maybe 75%, I think it would be a little bit more stimulating. But as is, like it's a very languid sort of fight, I think. Am I actually hitting this guy? Like what's happening? But yeah, Daredevil season three. What is it that Appa does, or Appa? No, Appa, what's the guy from that, that meme from uh, Emperor's New Groove when it's like Chef's Kiss and he's like Reaper the Grey hey how's it going Hunter Hunter is pretty great is it the X is silent right I'm watching the creator the creators earlier work Yu Yu Hakusho yeah so I want to watch Yu Yu Hakusho as well um, where are you watching it by the way I don't think it's on Crunchyroll I have Crunchyroll and guys, I, I was kind of worried. I wasn't sure how I would get, get on with a uh, dub or sorry subs. And uh, after watching uh, 131 episodes of Dragon Ball Super, I'm like, I'm in it. I'm dialed in. I'm doing my duo lingo every day. I'm learning a bunch of Japanese. So yeah, it's going well. I'm psyched. But hey, Reaper, how are you today? I hope you're doing well. Um, my shipment of Kingdom Hearts 3 was delayed, so I'm playing Kingdom Hearts 1, trying to get through the game to get a uh, no continue trophy. Yu Yu Hakusho was the best back in the day. I heard it's really, really good. Um, so 
I definitely like to watch it. As you can see in the background, there's my box set of Akira, which I finished recently. So good. Um, if you've never had the chance to read it. Uh, I don't know, that's actually like a limited thing, but if you could get, if you could just read it, you know, buy the editions separately. I got that for Christmas from my mom. Seriously, it was incredible. It was so, so good. The amount of artistry on display. Uh, Katsuhiro Tomo's artwork too, it's just, mm, chef's kiss. A six, I don't really have a tech boost. I really don't have that many, like, I wish I would lear have learned more stuff, really. Uh, I don't really have more to learn. Cheer. Uh, sure. Whatever. If I remember correctly, this is a pretty... Pretty... Sp I was gonna say sprightly? Why am I saying that? It's a pretty quick fight. Oh, wait. You know, if we don't hit these guys, they're fine. Also, okay, I gotta say... Love the game. Kingdom Hearts 2... Or Kingdom Hearts uh, 2's... Uh, Halloween Town sucks a lot. Er, not sucks. I'm I'm being mean. It's just not my favorite. It's uh, after how good this one is, like how memorable this one is. It's a real bummer. Like, <laughs> it's just like this strange, like trap laden main thing. Like I don't know why it's this miniature. This miniature world as well. I don't know, guys. It's just really weird. And I'm sorry that I'm breathing weird, because it's, it's always just strange, like, when you can hear yourself breathe. So, uh, that's why I'm breathing weirdly. I cheat and use streaming websites. I finished the Dark Tournament arc, which seems to be the most iconic of the series. Was that the one where they have to, like, go and they have to choose the different doors? I remember seeing that in a... Like a video essay. Uh, they had to choose the doors, right? And all the people choose the doors differently. I need to get back to reading. Um, I've been reading. I read. A, I finished a couple books. I don't want Jack. Jack sucks. And I love Jack, but as a fighter, Jack is wanting. Um. Yeah. You don't really need Jack for anything, I don't think, so. Uh, plans for next Halloween! Guillotine Square. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. It's funny, though, too, where you play this game, and they don't even have, like, <clears throat> the, the full song. It's always, like, kind of like an approximation of the song. Which is fine, but... Oh no, where is, uh... I need to go to the graveyard. Oh, how do you get out of here? Oh no. I don't know. That's right, it's how the arc begins. Oh, cool. That's fun. I remembered correctly. Oh, now something... I was supposed to watch Farther Than the Universe, which is supposed to be a really good uh, anime as well. Guillotine Gate? Is that what it's called? No. I swear that you get to the... Oh yeah, it's right here. Okay. So you get to the graveyard some way, right? Pretty excited to play KH3. I'm luckily just finished. Oh, very cool. I only finished KH3. Or KH2 for uh, the first time last year. And it was like, you know... July last year. It's a, a fun game. What did you think about the difference between Cage 1 and Cage 2? Because I maintain that Cage 1, for me personally, I just love the combat so much. It's so fluid and fairly simple. I thought Cage 2 got kind of flashy in, in an obtrusive way because it, you, you don't get combat roll until like halfway through the game, which is just, just bananas to me. I don't understand that choice at all. And you can't, uh, you can't switch targets by just pushing the shoulder buttons, which I think is so weird. But some people, like, were like, what are you talking about? Uh, it's fine, so, I don't know, it might just be me being particular after playing, like, 70 hours of Kingdom Hearts 1 or whatever, but... I'm so excited for Kingdom Hearts 3. My package was delayed, so I had to play this, but... You know, not a big deal. 
I'm happy to be playing it. Forget me not. Sally? What the heck? I went and did my best. And my god, I am in something swell. And for a moment, why? Zero. That's the sky. Stories I can tell. I did. The first time since I can't remember when. You're just like my old bony self again. And I'm a that's right, I am the pumpkin king. <laughs> God, I love this movie so much. It's so good. There's a reason why people still wear like shirts and get tattoos and stuff. It's can't beat it. Oh no, my nub came off. My nub came off, guys. I know you're supposed to suck the knob or the nub. Huh, <laughs> knob, the nub. Came off again. So this is my new, like, oh, sorry, that's a bad sound. New, like, renewable stainless steel straw that I got. That bonehead Jack is really making a what does he say? That's it for you, Sandman and Bone Daddy. I love Oogie Boogie. It's such a weird, it's such a strangely structured film, like, when you think about it. It's really bizarre. Because, like... Oogie Boogie is the main villain, but you don't, like, Jack and Oogie Boogie don't have any scenes to build animosity toward one another. They're just generally opposed, which is strange, you know? That's, like, a really weird choice for a movie. But it works, because you're just so charmed by, like, the characters and the the look of it and, you know, all that stuff. It's still, like, really strange. Um, it seems almost, like, ancillary. Or like extraneous to the actual like fight that or like thing that's going on in the story about uh, Jack trying to take Halloween, you know? Because if you think about it, 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 it is kind of extraneous. The only reason that Oogie Boogie's involved is because Lock, Shock, and Barrel uh, take Santa to him. Otherwise, they could have just had them, you know, I don't know, have him ab abduct him somewhere else, and it wouldn't have mattered. But. Just because Jack realizes he made a mistake and goes through the uh, the graveyard door that leads apparently directly to Boogie Boogie that, like, any of it happens, you know? I missed the whole mechanic of the drives and spent the whole game not using, oh no, not using high jump glide roll, etc. Oh no. Oh no, Reaper, that is, that is rough. Wow. That is intense. I don't... Man. Oh, wait, what? Did I mess it up again? One. This one. Okay. Such a weirdly non, uh, non thematic uh, sound that that made. Is a hole just blowing the wall? Oh yeah, look at this. Jack in the box. Oh, that was that was some surprise, wasn't it? The plans for next Halloween! I looked at the stat screen and then I realized I could, got, could have got the roll really early if I used drives more. Yeah. You can also do the, uh, you can also farm drive cores or whatever in, um, uh, Agrabah. I believe. I forget how I did it. Well, you can go to, like, Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie is a really good place to farm your drives or XP for your drives, and then also, um, I believe there's a way to do it in Agrabah. It's kind of an exploit, so it's not great, but it was all in Critical too. That is a bummer. I'm sorry. But overall, what did you think of the story? Because I'm still asking people, on the, like Smudge Jay and Caitlin on the channel, just like, what am I, what is happening? Like, because I felt, I know a lot of people feel differently because they really like Roxas, 
But I thought that that prologue was just like, what is what is going on? Because you have Roxas and Namine and I don't know. When you start learning that like Roxas is Sora's somebody, right? Right? No, or is it Roxas Sora's nobody? So Sora has a heartless version. He turned into a heartless at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. We don't have an expert in the chat to tell us. Oh, we've lost them. All right, where are we going, Jack? Hero. Zero. I trumped through the pumpkin bash. I peeked behind the cyclops' eye. I did. That was not helpful at all, Zero. Where are you going? Wow, critical mode. That's rough, too. At least you got the trophy, right? Um, that's good. It's probably my favorite Sora outfit besides the main one. Um, okay, then we have to go back to the freaking graveyard. And so much fighting in this level. It's like, what are they called? Combat rooms? Um, wow. At least, you know, after you kind of get it, it's there's some pretty cool looking moves when you could do like spinning, fighting things in the second one um, that I do appreciate when you do double keyblades and stuff. But, uh, man, some of those fights are like punishing. They're so hard near to the end. I was doing it on like regular mode and I was like, oh my god, I'm like severely under leveled. Did you have to do any grinding, by the way? Because I did have to do some grinding eventually just to get my Sora up to snuff. I could have gone higher though for the end. When I had to fight all the Organization 13 people. I like to describe it as a genuinely creative, massively drunk and messy. I agree. It's uh, incredibly ambitious, but so convoluted that I'm not sure it's so much complex as just. I don't want to be mean about it. Like, Horror storytelling? Or at least, uh... I mean, you don't want confusion to be the main thing that your audience feels, and I feel like a lot of it is just like, what? What? Especially with, like, okay, so who is, for example, good explanation if I ask a bunch of people, who is Xehanort, right? Who is Xehanort? So you have well, Ansem the Wise. Ansem the Wise is who? Ansem the Wise is an actual human. His Heartless is Xemnas? And his Nobody is Ansem? In the first game? And somehow we get Xehanort from these guys? Does anyone know? But the idea two entities get made if a human gets absorbed, that's cool in the shell, the body, yearning for an identity. That is really cool. And I also thought it was cool. I mean, did you even, did you go through like 358-2 and all that stuff where you have, what's her name, no Nori? Or that, that woman's name. And she is, <laughs> she is um, like part of Sora's, she gets absorbed into Sora because she's Sora's no somebody or something like that. It's like really weird. She doesn't show up in Kingdom Hearts 2. She's already dead. Or reabsorbed in the Sora. It's it's crazy, um, man. I'm it, obviously like I love this series, but even I, I'm just I have no idea what I'm talking about. So. I think we're almost done with this area, actually. I just defeat this guy. There's you fight. There's a lot of people here. I forgot that this was such an involved area. So far we've defeated, what, three worlds? Pretty cool. After this, I believe it's just, what, Neverland and Hollow Bastion? We need to do, Neverland is not volunteer, is not um, skippable, I don't think. It's 
crazy that Haley Joel Osment is like 35 now. It's fun. I mean, I'm happy for him to have been able to like finally tie a bow on this journey, but still, it's wow. Who would have thought he would have been doing it this long, right? I wish the character model for Sora was based on like modern day Haley Joel Osment. Just like a, a bearded man. Okay. Okay. I'll get. Um, yeah, we're almost to the boss. Which is Oogie Boogie in house form, I believe, first. And then Oogie Boogie in regular form with the jet. Or is that the second one? Once again. I have no, no idea, guys. No clue. I actually think that might be the second one, because that one has the drive forms, right? In the, the sort of roulette table. I'm gonna watch a bunch of videos tonight and just like cram on Kingdom Hearts lore. Because I should know it by tomorrow. I swear I tried. But the idea that like one person can split into three people or whatever is just so hard for me to grasp. Like, for example, Roxas. Okay, so you have Roxas. Who is Ventus? And Venitas. Venitas. I need an expert. Someone help me. I think I'm going to go uh, MP route, though, with my Sora in 3, because I feel like MP is probably, I hope it's going to be, like, fairly powerful, because it's it's massively powerful later in this game, specifically, um, and in, in the second one as well, but you're more focused on the dry forms and stuff, so. Oh, look, I can do, I can do fun emotes. It's me. Oh, it's not me. Who is that? I sign in as a different person? I knew oh, it's my girlfriend's. It's my girlfriend's thing. I was like, what? Oh man, I didn't get my... That's why. I forgot to sign out last time. I don't like this because you, you can't stop yourself from jumping off. Just gotta, like, go. Oh! Out of. and out. Oh no. I just wanna open this chest. Yeah? No? Yes? No? Oh no. Ether. Oh no, oh no, god. Okay, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Another secret entrance right here. Shut tight. Oh no. Oh my god. Goofy, you dumb dumb. Uh, I already just jumped off the set. I decided to delve deep into the story this past week. I guess Xehanort was an old man who fused with the character of Terra. Terra was kind of a jerk too. Ten years prior, in birth by sleep, then they lost their memories and became the apprentice to Ansem the Wise to learn more about Kingdom Hearts. Then during the time, that time, Xehanort split himself into Nobody and a Heartless. Both the Heartless and the Nobody were destroyed. The pure Xehanort became whole again. Okay, but what about, so who is Ansem then? The Ansem that you fight in Kingdom Hearts 1. He is related to Xehanort, is he not? Right? Right? Oh my god. In this chest. 
ether. Thunder, here. Fire. Anson decided to steal his master's name. See ya. Okay. So, but who is Ansem then? Isn't Ansem... Is Ansem part of Ansem the Wise? Ansem the Wise split into different people, right? So there's Ansem the Wise, and then Xemnas. And then Ansem, right? So, like, old Ansem the Wise, the real guy. Xemnas, which is his heartless. And then... Young Ansem, which is his nobody? <laughs> this is such a stupid conversation. <laughs> Oh man, it was like the talk of hearts and I was watching these videos and I was like, what? I'm so confused. I'm trying, I'm trying so hard. It's like me trying to learn math in high school. It's not gonna happen. It's crazy to fight this dumb. <laughs> house thing. Um, guys, excuse me. Excuse me. Just let me get up to the top here. Thunder. Evil playroom. Okay, we made it. Ooh, okay, I forgot we had to fight. Lock, shock, barrel. Come down, Mr. Santa Claus. I want to do it. Let's toss toss. Jack said we should work together. Be the kind, birds of a feather, now and forever. you do we win okay we won <laughs> I speed up three children so everything's good Rogi Boogie is the meanest man of all. Uh, oh man, we're only level 29. What are we? 31. I only got two levels this whole time. Jeez. Okay, let's do it. I was always sad in the... In the uh, whole uh, grand scheme of things that... We didn't have more of a, I don't know, I always wanted like a sequel or something to explore like a different world because I was so tantalized by that circle of trees in the main game, or in the main movie. You know, I thought like even seeing the Easter Bunny was really cool to me when I was younger. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um. Oh yeah. Oh! Oh, that was supposed to hit. Do we do it? Do we do it? Is the door open? Not shut tight anymore? Still oh torture chamber, how nice. Oh that mess is a whole other can of worms if I remember right. I think that's when the pure Zane or time travel brought back seven other versions of himself to use as means to form the dark half of the X Blade. Okay, the X Blade I didn't even remember until you said it. Oh it is this one. Okay, so wait. So this is the fight. This is something. And then, don't we have to stop him? I have to like put up bars, right? Here we go, here we go. Beat you, Oogie Boogie. Beat you to death! <laughs> Eleven. Oh, snake eyes. 
God, I love that. That movie's so good. So good, guys. And it's like a a lean, spry 72 minutes. It's, it's literally like an hour and 10 minutes long. Not long at all. Oh, I got you, Oogie Boogie. Got you. I've got a keyblade of your name on it. Sick. I can't wait to get the float, or the glide, from Peter Pan. Yo, move, bone daddy. Oh, that's clever. It went on a... I didn't realize that it got on a... Snake Eyes, and then he freaked out. Are you supposed to be running around? Like, what's happening? Very tepid sort of uh, <laughs> boss fight. Very low energy. Good thing I blocked my guys from my friends. I never summoned, so this would be fun. The director clearly loves the series, but he forgot the key rule of making complex stories to simplify it and organize information into the context of the story itself. I agree. It, uh, it is, like I said, it's, it's fascinating, but so convoluted that it is nigh, like, unaccessible to a normal person. Like, it, it, it just doesn't, doesn't make... Like, the idea that you could play Kingdom Hearts 1, <laughs> 1 and 2, and then go to 3, and not necessarily understand the core story is, like, so weird. It's such a strange idea as a storyteller to think like you need all this extraneous stuff that you know you might not know from the main core games. Like it's not even just a group of like side side things that you might benefit from knowing. It's literally like the the most important story. Like Aqua and Terra and all that stuff. Like will that will that mean anything in the new one? You know like. It obviously will, but who... If you played 1 and 2, you have no idea who Aqua and Terra are. You know? Or Ventus, or Benitas, or any of that stuff. So there's my... Protein coffee, and now I'm moving on to my vegetable drink. Mm -mm. Sorry, that's loud. Oh boy. This is probably uh, one of the strangest of all the fights in this game. Um, but not like. I wouldn't say it's particularly stimulating. It's just sort of like get up here and do this sort of thing. Well, like I would, I would compare the director or like the storytelling to Kojima, but I feel like even Kojima has a little bit more cohesion in what kind of story he's telling. And even if you don't know, like if you go from Metal Gear Solid. One to two. Okay, yeah, you got that. You go from two to three, and you, then three to four, but you didn't play Peace Walker or like Mobile Ops or any of that stuff, you're still gonna get, like, you still understand Big Boss, you still understand Outer Heaven, you still understand, um, you know what I mean? Like, uh, even with five, the context of everything, like Diamond Dogs, all that stuff, it's pretty apparent storytelling wise. You know, it all makes sense in context. It's, uh, the things are, you know, obviously enriched by knowing the full story, but at the same time, it's not beholden to that entirely. It's still like a, a fun story, no matter what. Like the simplistic part of it is like, you know, clone son tries to, you know, reconcile slash take revenge on his father. It's basically one, right? Or actually, no, that's basically on the X, whatever the. Uh, 
That's one and two, not like Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear one and two. The big boss. Which is actually Venom Snake. Don't, don't tell me. Um, and then Metal Gear Solid two, or no, sorry, Metal Gear Solid one is, you know, about two brothers reconciling their differences, you know, with uh, Liquid and Solid. Metal Gear Solid two has Solidus, again, clone brothers and all that stuff, you know, like, did I miss one? Oh no. Lantern. There's this last this last pustule. There it is. <laughs> Whew. There we go. Got it. We got it. It's all right, guys. We got it. Gravity. I remember that was a really big song by John Mayer when I was in high school. I a, he's super talented. I'm just not a, a big fan of his music. Pumpkinhead. Nice. Plans for next Halloween. All right, I can't remember. Let's look at our our abilities and our stats. So abilities, got eight. They're not really gaining any guard is important, I guess. Um, it's crazy that you get guard this late. Sonic Blade, once again, I don't really like Sonic Blade, but Second Wind is really important, but uh, we can't use it yet. Second Wind, yeah, second chance. Cool. And then let's go to our equipment. Jungle King, 30 strength, 6 MP, 3 wishes even better, Pumpkinhead, I mean, I can't wait to get the uh, the Rose one, that's that's really the best, but uh, we get it from Hollow Bastion, so, once you get that, it's just like, it's uh, pretty intense, you can do a lot of damage, so I'm excited to go back to Chernabog and, um, What's this called? Uh, Ansem at the end with that, because with the Kingdom Blade, it was so hard. <laughs> like, defeating Chernabog himself was just, oh my god, it was, it was an ordeal, guys. It was an ordeal. Luckily, the 1.25, or 1.5, 2.5 remix organizes the story in order so it makes a tiny bit more sense. This is true. I think my magic is as good as Donald's now. Okay, I think we're going to the Hollow Bastion, guys. Oh, wait, no. Is it Neverland? Yeah, it's definitely Neverland. Hollow Bastion's over here, right? Metal Gear, just an issue with knowing chronology. I like how Metal Gear series are sort of prequels to Metal Gear. Yeah, true, 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 true. Well, it's crazy to me that, like, Metal Gear 1 and 2, not even Solid. Metal Gear 1 and 2, the story of Solid Snake infiltrating the base and, like, killing Big Boss or whatever, is something that most people never played. Like, that's crazy to me. It's so vitally important to the lore, but then you, like, you watch, you know, you watch the cutscenes, you play the games, you see the story, and what I appreciate about, appreciate about Kojima's writing is, like, yeah, it's super wordy and, like, overly explanatory, but at the same time, you get the context of Snake's relationship to Big Boss. Pretty much from the, the onset of the game, and like it's it's very apparent how they feel about one another, and those complicated feelings, and like I, I don't know, I love I love Metal Gear so much. It's probably my maybe my favorite series of all time because I, I beat four. Four is my favorite, which is kind of a weird choice to a lot of people, but I love four so much. Um, but yeah, it was like one of those games where I played it just endlessly the summer that it came out. Um, I beat it like seven times. I was, I think it was seven. It might have been five. I don't know. I got like Silent Fox rating. I got everything. I was obsessed with it. Obsessed with the story. The microwave tunnel. It's one of the best things I've ever seen in the game. Still, um, the final fight above, like aboard the uh, freighter or whatever it is with the liquid ocelot or whatever is amazing. God, I love. I just love that game. Everything about it. It's so good. And uh, I feel like the story, while convoluted, 
still a little bit more cohesive than um, Kingdom Hearts, I think. But yeah, like I said, it's just crazy that that backstory, Big Boss and Solid Snake, is something that took place on like a 2D console that not that many people experienced. It's very bizarre. And I also love that contrarian nature of Kojima, that he takes something like Raiden, a character whom most, uh, a majority of people, I would say, dislike, and sort of just stuck a thumb in their eye and said, you know, whatever, this guy's gonna be like an uber badass ninja. You know, enjoy that. Yeah. I wish we could go to, like, Neverland, like, actual Neverland, instead of just this ship, but... This is a really fast, really fast level. We should be able to blaze through it. 420 just blaze, guys. I could also do some ASMR if you wanted to. Just get really close to my new mic. I don't have a, I don't have a, what's it called? The thing to block my plosives. Ooh. Good thing I'm further away. <laughs> I didn't think you'd come, Sora. The plosives are hard. Metal Gear Revengeance looked like fun. Hokey, hokey Camp. Over the top fun. I never actually played Revengeance. Um, it looked fun. The cutting mechanic was super ambitious. I feel like I remember I watched a video where Kojima kind of explained personally how he felt the, uh, the project kind of fell apart and how he kind of like was shepherding it at first and then kind of just fell off. And um, as... Kojima is want to do. It was very, very ambitious. And he's always, like, pushing it in some way or another. And, uh, you know, it ended up seeming like a really fun game. I think, I forget which studio did it. It's the same people that did Bayonetta, I think, right? Oh, no. Dark Sora. But, uh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's my shadow. Oh. Forgot about that. Um, this is also a stupidly, like, confusing level. But yeah, the, the cutting mechanic, all that stuff, it looks really cool. And I like Raiden so much as a character. All the Raiden, the Raiden vamp fight is like... I, don't, I wouldn't describe many things as sick, but that's pretty sick, I would say. Team Little Angels? I don't know. I don't know what they're called. That sounds familiar, though. I think there's a yellow trinity up here that I can do. Yep. I don't think I got the yellow trinity yet, though. I think I need to get it from the Colosseum. Okay, so... Door doesn't open. This door does open. Go into the hold. It's basically just fighting my shadow in different places, right? Um... What is this? Uh, yeah, the, the the level design, this this one is just also, just like, what? It's baffling. Okay, so we came through that side, coming up this side. I want to play Bayonetta. I actually added, like, a whole bunch of games, like, old games to my, uh, Amazon wish list, hoping to get them because I have, next time I go to my dad's, I'm going to pick up my PS3, and um, that way we'll be able to play the Metal Gear collection, which I have at my mom's in storage. I'll have to go find it in Colorado, but conceivably we could play that, and then also Bayonetta and some other PS3 stuff that I missed. Also, guys, Konami, what are you doing? Like, why is there no Metal Gear HD? PS4. I know the Kojima thing didn't work out for you guys, I guess, but like, imagine how many people would buy an up Metal Gear Solid 1 through 4. That'd be crazy. It's like a money on the table, you know? Money on the table. Gosh, does this ever end? Oh 
boy. But yeah, Metal Gear Solid also scratched the itch that I think Kingdom Hearts does as well of being very boss oriented. Because I love a good boss fight, it's also the reason why I really love uh, the Dark Souls games, you know, the Soul Soulsborne's game. Soulsborne games. Because um, I just love a good boss fight. And uh, love a mini boss fight. Love a macro boss fight, you know. I just, I enjoy all of it, so. Uh, Bayonetta is so good. It was made by the original creator of Devil May Cry. I would love to get Devil, get into Devil May Cry too, because I remember I beat the first one when I was in eighth grade, and then I just never went back to it, and it's something that um, I always regretted, because I do think it is a really cool looking series. And um, it's so stylish, and Bayonetta is also stylish. It's also about a lady who has a, 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 a a lady who has a suit made out of her own hair, which is just bananas in like the best possible way. So obviously I'm into it, but not in a weird way. But yeah, Bayonetta seems cool, and Bayonetta's in um, you know she's in Smash, and I feel like I just owe it to Smash to like know what I'm t know what I'm doing. Are both my guys dead? The heck? What are you doing, guys? Is there, isn't there a hole in the, the netting or something? This is why this game is so weird. Like, what is this level design? DMC5 might be the perfect re-entry once it comes out. Cool. I mean, it looks incredible. It looks really, really good. So, I would love to, um, I would love to play that. And, uh, oh wait, there's a save point, there's a save point. I'd love to play it, and uh, I think actually with the last one that came out, when I cut my hair like really, really short, and um, I was like, I kind of look like Dante when I had my hair really short, and I was a little bit, I was like a lot skinnier, um, and I kind of looked like Dante when I had his short hair. But that was many moons ago. My cat Gwen is just like, She's just stretching in a creepy, weird way. Gwen, what are you doing? She just keeps stretching like a strange cat. Guys, I love cats. I want to get a third cat because these two cats, they love me, but they've betrayed me recently for my girlfriend. They like her more. Even though I, I'm the one that feeds them every morning, but, you know, whatever. I don't care about that. Oh, no. Multiples. Oh, uh... Reaper, are you into... Are you into... Marvel? I mean, DMC? I, I think that game gets more flack than it deserves. It looked really cool. I mean, I don't know, whatever. Fans are so fickle. I, most of the time when someone... There's, like, pushback against a game like that, I think it's undeserved, like, a majority of the time. And honestly, all the stuff, the new stuff of Devil May Cry, looks so much like DMC, so... <laughs> Like, I don't, that shouldn't be that big of a deal, I don't think. It looks very, very similar to DMC. Am I almost dead? I mean, I did not even notice. It's so crazy to me, you, ha you can't move if you want to do a technical. On, goofy. God. Where's Max? Hashtag where's Max, guys. Where's Max? I want to know. Where's your son? Also, who is the mother? This is not going the way that I envisioned. Wow. The back, the back swing on that was pretty, pretty crazy. Oh my god, he's just like stomping around. <clears throat> Come on. Almost there. Also, I don't know how you felt about it in Devil May Cry, or sorry, not Devil May Cry. Kingdom Hearts 2, uh, the, the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff was just crazy. So weird. One sec. Hey, you on your way home? Yep. Okay, cool. I'll see you soon. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.
You okay? Yeah. Oh no. Okay, I'll see you soon. I'll see you at home. Alright, bye. Bye. Apparently, the Hideki Itsuno, creator of 2 to 5, Windy. liked DMC, DMC so much that he took a lot of the mechanics from it. I love Marvel a lot. What do you like, uh, what do you think about Spider Man Far From Home? That's what I was going to ask you. Um, are you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited that Jake Gyllenhaal is going to be in a giant, uh, giant superhero movie. Come on. That guy's awesome. So good. So talented. One of the best actors we have today. So I'm psyched. That's but that's what I'm excited about, dude. Oh my god, how do we get out of here? There we go. And this is where we fight Hook. Ah, oh, what a codfish that Riku. I know, right? What an absolute bummer. Uh, I'm gonna sub Donald for Peter. <laughs> there you are, Peter. Oh, here's the beginning of the absolute nightmare mechanic that is flying in this game. Uh, all the flying fights are just my least favorite part of the game. Easily. Just not, not great. The Ursula one, bad. Chernabog, also bad. <laughs> Or then the boat fight with Ansem made my, uh, it's what, that foiled me for my, my one run that would have got no continues, no, uh, no alterations or whatever because, uh, equipment alterations because I was too concerned with, uh, I could beat Ansem with just a Kingdom Blade, it took forever, I almost died repeatedly. Then I'd get to the dumb Ansem boat thing at the end and I'd just die, like it's so hard to beat that part. With just a Kingdom Blade. But whatever. I was surprised to see Donnie Darko's Mysterio. I did not expect it. Yeah, that's so cool for people who didn't know that he's gonna be in the movie. I mean, he's such an artsy guy, and like I, I like his choices as a an actor so much. It was cool to see him in something a little bit more um, like overtly mainstream. I'm I'm really excited to see him just. And also in like the new the next part, the next phase of the MCU. So I hope he doesn't get killed off because I want to see him like flourish as a villain. I want I want Mysterio just to be around. Like I think that's what I loved about Aquaman, spoilers for Aquaman, is that they didn't they weren't obsessed with just killing a bunch of the villains. Like they let all the villains or like a lot of the villains live, which I think is uh, a lesson that a lot of like superhero movies probably should learn. You don't have to kill your villains. I don't like that's the one I remember when I was younger. And I watched Batman 89, and I was like, what the hell? Like, why do they kill the Joker? The whole point is that you don't, like, you can't kill the Joker. That's Batman's eternal problem, is he, he's incapable of killing the Joker, even though he definitely should. Because he's just too good, you know? And that's what I feel is similar with uh, a lot of this stuff. Just don't kill people. Like, you can't. It's more interesting to keep them alive. And that way you can have people come back. Or if you're going to kill them, do it in an interesting way, like Eric Killmonger in Black Panther. You know, like do it in a meaningful character arc that really drives home the themes of the movie. I'm wondering when the movie takes place. Oh yeah, me too. I mean, I think it's funny that a lot of people are like, oh man, that totally ruined it. I was like, did it though? Like I know people want to be surprised or whatever, but like, do people really want to be surprised? Because I feel like when they are surprised, that's when they're most disappointed. So 
did it really ruin it for you? Was Spider-Man going to be, spoilers guys, permanently dead for the next, forever? Is he done? You know what I mean? No, of course he's not done. What a dumb, what a dumb idea at all. You know what I mean? Of course he's not done. So you knew he was going to come back. And you knew there was going to be another Spider-Man movie. I just don't understand why it's such a, a big deal. Like, it's just so bizarre to me that some people were so disappointed, like, oh, now I know Peter's back. Well, duh. Like, what? Oh my gosh, it's just so, it's so strange. I just find it, like, it's, it's the context of, I don't know, it's like willful, um, willf, not willful ignorance, but like willful denial of how a business, the movie business works, like, they announce stuff years in advance, so you know it's gonna happen, and it's one of their biggest, most important properties. It was... <sighs> Whatever. Anyway. Just wanna say, thanks so much, Reaper, and, uh... Uh, I hope... Man, I hope, uh... <laughs> I hope, Fresh to Kill, you're alright over there. I hope you're sleeping well, and, uh, thank you, 99, for watching, as always. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys. Looking forward to talking more later on. Uh, tomorrow I'll be back with Kingdom Hearts 3. So excited. Um, thanks for hanging out while my package was delayed today and just watching me blaze through the rest of this game. Uh, Love to all you guys. Have a great night, and I will be back very soon. Goodbye for now.